Dan have made so many great movies together and there's a great chemistry between the two of you because I assume that you're also a good friend and not just colleague. Uh, I think, I personally think that with Zoolander and Zoolander 2, your chemistry is literally skyrocketing. So, how do you organize your teamwork on, on a movie like this, where you have to be professional, but also incredibly funny and bond together? Yeah, well, I, for me, it was much easier because Ben has to direct the movie, so he has to be more responsible, but... Uh, Excuse me, but for me, I just get to kind of uh, have fun and get to relax. And I think because Ben and I have known each other for so long, we kind of know how to get each other laughing. And uh, then to play these characters um, who are kind of very vain and narcissistic, uh, you know, um, I think that, you know, I'm not as narcissistic as Hansel, uh, but... Everybody has a little vanity, so um, you just kind of exploit that. And uh, the movie offers a little and very funny glimpse on uh, uh, this uh, uh, time between 2001 and 2015 where we can see Hansel's new life. But uh, did you spoke with Ben and Justin about the, the, the backstory of the character that we don't see in the movie? Yeah. Um, I, I feel like that the backstory for Hansel, especially in this movie, he's been living in the desert with his group of friends. And when I say group of friends, it's like a very intimate group of friends. <laughs> uh, and so it's, uh, you remember in the first one, there was an orgy scene. And so when this movie begins, Hansel is, uh, you know, living with this group in, uh, the desert. But uh, that's what's kind of funny is that, you know, even with a group, it ends up being the same problems that you have with just one person. <laughs> Not enough freedom. And you wrote a couple of uh, movie masterpieces with Wes Anderson, uh, yeah. Rushmore and the Royal Tenenbaums. Yeah. So did you uh, speak with Justin for the screenplay? Did you add something of your own to the character and the situations or, or not? Well, no, they kind of, um, I felt they did such a good job kind of making a funny script, but the way Ben works as a director, he was always kind of encouraging us to kind of uh, do more, uh, do more things and to, you know, take chances and to improvise. So uh, we would kind of, you know, we would do the script, but then we would also kind of come up with our own stuff. And music plays an important uh, role in Zoolander and Zoolander 2. If I could travel back in time using my personal DeLorean to 1985 yeah. and take a look uh, inside your Walkman, what would I find? find? 1985, maybe some Bob Marley, maybe uh, ACDC. Great choice. Uh, maybe uh, Elvis Costello uh, and uh, Flock of Seagulls. <laughs> and about the, the, the cult following of the first Zoolander, we all know that the, the, the first chapter wasn't very lucky at the box office um, yeah. because of the 9-11 tragedy. Yeah. But during these 15 years, it, it has become uh, one of the fun favorite movie all around the world. What do you think about this uh, well, strange uh, it's life? Such a, it's been such a nice surprise over the years because when the movie came out, it you know didn't do, it just did sort of so-so. And we never imagined that you would make a sequel because the movie didn't do that well. But over the years, we noticed when we were traveling how many people would come up to us about wanting us to do Blue Steel and do Magnum. And so we started thinking, God, maybe the movie really has like a cult following. Uh, and we began to talk about maybe doing a sequel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.